right. Right now, we have with us the coach of NESW Blizzard. If you can talk, Kai, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. You're cool. Wow, you sound cool, calm, and collected after that dominating victory that NESW Blizzard just had over Jumpstart. How do you feel about this win? I feel really good. I feel like a lot of it was on uh, the guys that were actually playing the game and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like they played really well. They play a lot on their own and they do their job pretty well. Yeah, well said, Coach. It definitely came through, uh, especially after that, uh, that rough game two. Uh, what, can you walk us through what it was like being with this team throughout the season? Uh, you know, I think it, at the start of the season, the average ELO of the team was like in the low gold. And the fact that they're now all plat and have one style is just fantastic. Um, I think, as I said, a lot of them have put the time and the effort on their own to really improve. I think that every single time that we do play and we do practice and stuff like that, they are getting a lot out of it, but it's on themselves to really take that information and apply it to themselves to improve. So as much as I would like to say anything that I did got them to where they are now, a lot of it is their own initiative and their own ability to get this far. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, a uh, final question before we move on and interview some of the players. What do you think should be the goal of NESW Blizzard moving forward? What do you want for each of these members to achieve or to achieve as your team? I think a lot of the, the players on this team are very gifted uh, with micro mechanics, and there's a lot of stuff that they um, really should push for in terms of developing themselves as a player outside of the, just those micro mechanics. And I'd like them to keep pushing up in the, the NESW organization and see if they can try to move up to Thunder. All right, that sounds good. Well, thank you very much. Um, and congratulations on a great season. Now we will be moving on to interview the top laner, Keegan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kai. So, some great words from the coach. Love to hear it. You hear they have uh, they have their eyes on those Thunder positions. I have I have all the faith in the world that they can make that they, they can make that happen. And even if they don't, this is a team to be reckoned with. Right. Now we will be interviewing uh, Keegan, the top laner, as I pull him in. A.K.A. S.W. Unshackled. Unshackled! Did it, did it seem like you were a part of too much in that last game because everyone was dying around you? But good stuff in that game, man. How you feeling? It feels good. I mean, like, I just play top lane to uh, not int, so, you know. I uh, I like the I play weak side top usually. I don't like get ganked and I like I don't get ganked much and like we don't really do that. It's more like to let the carries like Yomi and Leo like just hard win these games. Um, so my goal is literally to just try to stop their top laner from playing whatever his uh, win con is. That's that's all I do all game. Mm -hmm. You say that, but your Urgot definitely played very well, assisting in some of those ganks and even getting a solo kill in some of those games. Um, can you tell me why you like playing Urgot so much? Uh, I picked up Urgot because um, I think that, like, he's, I just think he, he fits well, like, as you know, into solo queue, like, everyone runs into you. And this, the enemy team comp, we discussed it over the games that, like, after the first two games, they're like, all they like to do is run into you. So mm -hmm. it just worked out really well. Also, like, once we took their top laner off of his 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 main one trick Orn, um, mm -hmm. I think that my Urgot was I was just able to lane better than him. Um, even with all the help he was acquiring from his jungle, um, and then like our jungle, you know, he played great too throughout the whole series, pretty much. Um, but that's like for me, like I said, it's a it's a whole team win. Like that's like it's it's almost all them. I just play for this pretty much for the CC and the and the assists. Here, we think you did a fantastic job. Every time someone went up there, it was just, they couldn't get anything. And if they did, it took them three years and a few days after that as well. So really nice job uh, doing that. I know mid-season, you, uh, you swapped up into the top lane. So why, yeah. why don't you walk us a bit through like how you were able to wrap your mind and get into the mindset to be the top laner for NESW Blizzard? 
Uh, I mean, it was a it was a really hard transition, and I'm I'm actually I'm still learning a lot. I'm pretty bad at top lane to be honest. Overall, not like bad like in a sense, but like I'm still really really new to the role. Um, I'm an I'm I'm an assassin player. Like I play a lot of Kiana and like like Silas, Zed's gems like that. So the transition to top lane, it like forced me to completely change how I play League of Legends. It forced me to have better wave management as the top lane is so different from the mid and like the way you want to place the wave and. It's it's been a uh, experience um, in the top lane, and but I think that the switch was well worth it as Leo, uh, you know how his mid lane is. So <laughs> absolutely, being the silent soldier taking it for the team and playing weak. Well done, Keegan. Um, now we'll be pulling in our jungler for this game or for this series, Coach Boomerhands. Awesome, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Keegan. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing uh, to seeing Unshackled grow uh, over the next years as he really grows into the role of top lane. And uh, here now we have uh, we have Luka Doncic himself putting himself on Sejuani duty in Game Four in, for the dub. Uh, Luka, talk yes, us through how to go. <clears throat> well, you know, I know our carry is in the mid lane. Leo, he's playing Echo, which is a melee champion, and Sejuani just crew with melee champions, so. It was kind of just easy solution to uh, so, to the draft. I, I I have a quick question. How did you feel when the team saw you play so well on the Hecarim and the Gragas, doing most damage in all the games, and then just in the final game of what could have been victory and what did become your victory, choosing to put you on Sejuani? Well, you... I, it, it all comes down to my versatility as a jungle player, you know, because I play jungle a lot in Solo Queue, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I I could play anything in the jungle through my yeah. amount of solo queue that I put into that into that role. Wow. Yeah, the past the past forty eight hours you doing the jungle thing, I I was very impressed. Uh, anything that you want to say about the team? Uh, obviously, you are also the coach for Lightning. Uh, being able to play with Blizzard in these high stakes. Uh, any any comments on what it was like being able to be a part of that and see that up close i mean honestly it's actually pretty impressive how much they've grown uh because you know when I, I i subbed in before i think i had to play support for them for a match or two um and you know the team was like not kind of quiet didn't understand like macro for the most part um and we kind of go even in lanes but now like we're being very communicative they're being they're just winning lanes so they're just on top of objectives 24 7 so it's Pretty impressive to see how much they improved. Absolutely. Do you have anything to say to any of the uh, the fans out there, either for NESW or for Blizzard, or even now for you? Such an, uh, now that you put up such an incredible jungle showing. Easy dubs, yes, sir. Oh. Yes, you heard, sir. You heard it from the man himself. Easy dubs, yes, sir. Thank you, Dom. Uh. Thank you, Luca. I think uh, I think we're going to try and move on and try and get in a quick interview with the mid laner that you spoke of before, uh, Leo, uh, and let the monkey be unleashed for a little bit. Oh yes, sir. Let's go. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Oh, hello, hello. Hi. Hello. We have with us the undisputed Casker appointed MVP of Game. Four that won the series with us, Leo the Sexy Line. How is it going? You know, eating some cornbread, some chicken, you know, relaxing. Oh, wow. that sounds so good. Is that is that what you do whenever you get those easy dubs? Oh, those yeah, stomps? of course. Yeah, smacking mm -hmm. on some fruit snacks, you know? Mm -hmm. So so take, so take us through your mindset through the series, because game one came in, stomped. Game, game two kind of got stomped. Game three and four kind of stomped. Like... Okay. What was it like juggling that mental balance for It you? wasn't kinda. It wasn't um, kinda. You well, stopped. All right, all right. Game one, I was very confused by the drift. I didn't know what was happening, and we just locked the wood count. I was like, well, we're going to do something. <laughs> um, I then went top lane because it's an easier matchup. You know, then we stomped. And then the second game, um, you know, I blame myself for that because, uh, you know, my cash is kind of dog. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then game three and four, when you pulled out your. Yep. How did you feel playing against this Mordekaiser who was just trying to, I don't know, jump on top of you in lane and all that? 
I feel like they're just hard into draft the entire time, ah. except for game two. Of course. Uh, At that point, they're just hard into draft. I feel like our mid laner okay. is flaming, flaming a little too much. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but it makes sense. Leo, you, you really did play really well for, I think, a lot of that series. Um, you know, be, being here, being able to watch your growth, uh, not just as like an individual player, but also just as a teammate has been really, really nice to watch. Uh, anything Thank you want to say to to the rest of the team, coaches, anybody, family? Uh, wait, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Can I curse or no? Uh, keep uh, it mild. Try to bleep yourself out if you can. I would be entertained by that. Uh, and you also, wait, I have, I have one more thing. Yes. Uh, I'd like to give a good night kiss to everyone. Mwah. Mwah. Okay. Oh, thank you, All right. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much for the interview. Uh, my heads are in my hand. Oh. My cutie pies. Mwah. Okay. All right. Bye, Leo. Woo. That was a great one. Um. Hello. Yomi, Piku, Niku. I just want to say I'm so proud of you guys. You guys popped the heck off you let them know you gave them the business um, my what? first question is in that game one when that vi came and ganked you and you guys got the return kill like what was going through y'all's mind um well i kind of thought it was a little bit troll to come down there that early because we kind of they used all their abilities like the shenton and the uh swain e and they missed so it was only Vi to go forward, and they ended up having to flash, and then I kind of went aggro for the first blood. But I don't think it was, like, a super good play on their hands, but we also played it really well. So it was just, like, a big confidence boost for us that first game. Like, first play Absolutely. of the was really good. Yeah, so so one thing that's interesting is a lot of times you'll play against one bot lane, and, and it'll only be for one game, or when you're in solo queue, you'll only play against your opponents once. But as... You play in playoffs and in finals, you'll play against the same bot lane over and over and over again. How did you guys feel you adapted to their laning style and, and what did you think about the opponent bot laners? I feel like the, at least for the enemy support, did not know a ton about like the wave management and Yomi and I have been working on that a lot recently. It's like, especially today and yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I think we were really able to look at the wave and gain CS advantages off of that and look at uh, really good engage timings and also our teammates helping us with looking at where the jungler is and to order, in order to engage really helped. And Yomi? Yeah, I, I agree. They play a similar style to what we out of comps, which is they want to play towards their bot lane to carry the game. And they showed that a lot because they had a lot of jungle pressure constantly coming bot. If the Shin ulti is constantly going with the dives bot lane, and we just either learned that we have to constantly have deep vision throughout the game so we know how to track their jungler, have just our lanes really, really helping us with the jungle tracking and making sure that we're managing our waves properly. So it just kind of grew over time throughout the series. All right, so what you're hearing here is that the bot laners are saying, you can 3v2 us, you can 4v2 us, you can 5v2 us, but no matter what, we'll shit on you in lane no matter what. You hear, heard it here first. Our bot lane is insane. Is that what I heard correctly? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was... Word for word. Word for word. Subtive. Good. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to say to your team uh, in terms of this finals and, and how the entire season has gone? Uh, I would say that, especially towards the end in playoffs, we really stepped... My teammates really stepped it up with communication in our macro sense and... It was really because I came into NASW um, later, like in kind of in the middle of the style season, and it was really awesome to see everyone growing with their macro sense, and I was able to help out with that, and also I was growing too. I'm really happy that everyone was working as hard as they did. Well said. Well said, Yomi. Anything from you? Yeah, I just I'm really glad. Like I like Gab said, she came in kind of halfway through the season. Uh, I came in a little bit before the season starts, so to kind of see where we came from, from just like doing Clash together, and now winning style, just really, really good growth from all my teammates, 
and uh, we, we really came a long way, guys. Good job. All right, and there you have it from the victorious bot lane of NESW Blizzard style champions. Thank you guys so much for uh, hopping on, answering some questions. Great to get some insight from you. And like we said with Leo and with Unshackled, really, really looking forward to co your continued growth. You guys have shown immense growth, and I think it's uh, and I think it's only going to go further. I, and I, I personally cannot wait. Agreed. With that, uh, I think we're we're gonna sign off. I think that's all that's all there really is for us uh, here at Any Stormwolves. Uh, everybody who tuned in, thank you guys all so much for watching. We loved having you here. Loved being able to see NESW Blizzard pick up the three one win in the finals of the Style Esports. Uh, thank you, Drew, for hosting, uh, controlling all of the you know setting up the interviews, controlling the map, uh, setting up the stream. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for also known as Epic for the first couple of games casting and Genji stepping in afterwards. I'm sugar free. I've got Genji and Epic here, and this is all of us saying goodbye.